are you? I hope you had a great day. Guess what? I remembered to turn off the dryer today. That's progress. And guess what else? It's my birthday. Woohoo! How many of you know the right thing to do, but you just don't do it? I don't allow myself enough rest or sleep. So that's what I'd like to talk about today. There's probably nothing more important than getting a good night's rest. Sometimes I find myself staying up too late and then I have to get up early and get things done. Well, we could that. And I'm a popsicle. I can't get warm. I hurt everywhere. I have no energy. Well, duh. What did I think would happen? Sleep deprivation has been found even in healthy individuals who will get fibromyalgia-like symptoms. Poor sleep quality has shown to be a risk factor for the development of chronic widespread pain among otherwise healthy individuals. Our descending pain inhibiting pathways from the brain become impaired when we don't get enough sleep. That makes coping with pain more difficult. But oversleeping during the daytime, like napping, can make your symptoms even worse if you do it regularly. So I'm going to go into more detail on that. The trick is to get enough sleep during the night. And studies have found that insomnia often occurs in fibromyalgia patients. Some of you may experience this. Polysomnographic tests or data has shown that in some patients with fibromyalgia that experience wakefulness at night occurs during their non-rapid eye movement stage of their sleep cycle. And they have less slow wave sleep as a result. So let's talk about daytime napping. Sleeping when you should be awake, like napping, has been shown to be significantly associated with increased pain, depression, anxiety, fatigue, memory problems, and sleep problems. But wait, there is good news, so hang in there with me. I guess the point of that is why add more to what you're already having problems with? So if you need to nap and you nap for more than 30 minutes, that's apparently where the issues come in, especially if you do it on a regular basis. So in studies, they have found that if you nap for more than 30 minutes, frequently, those participants exhibited higher memory problems and more depression. But here's the good news. If you take naps of less than 30 minutes, you may find yourself more alert, emotionally stable, and have an improvement in your cognitive state meaning you can think more clearly and have less memory issues. Who doesn't want to think more clearly and have less memory issues? I know that I have mentioned before that when I need a nap, I don't get in my bed during the day. If I'm that tired, I can fall asleep 
with the TV blaring, if that's the case. If you have no choice, go ahead, but you might not want to get under the covers. Try just laying on top of the covers and co cover yourself with a blanket. It might keep you from sleeping too long. I mean, naps in themselves when they're less than 30 minutes are good for you. I mean, if you need them, take that nap. I mean, I will. I'll zonk right out right there in that chair when I'm feeling really exhausted. Have I slept more than 30 minutes? Yes, I have. But I don't do that daily. Definitely not daily. It's just in those times where, you know, you're just feeling like totally wiped out and you didn't sleep well. Take that power nap. So the most commonly reported reasons that people with fibromyalgia take a nap during the day were to catch up from the previous night's sleep or due to a headache because they just felt unwell, or they were tired or exhausted. What I found interesting was that younger adults took more than one nap per day compared to older adults over age 60. But the frequency of naps was the same, such as, you know, doing it daily every other day, that sort of thing. And in younger adults, they had children still at home. They probably napped when their children napped. But I think the most surprising thing is that men were found to nap more often than women. I don't know the answer to that, but that's what the study found. So what can we do have that honest conversation with your doctor and figure out what you can do. Do your own research. For me, a muscle relaxer to Xanadine was my trick to get myself sleepy and fall asleep at bedtime. But that might not work for you. And then my obvious help was my CPAP machine. I don't wake up at all hours of the night any longer. Flexoral works for some people, but it makes me anxious. Maybe an SNRI like Savella or Cymbalta might work for you. You just have to figure out what works for you. But if you have restless leg syndrome, and I can have that when I'm overexhausted and I should be asleep and I'm not asleep yet because I'm watching something on my tablet or something like that. You might need to seek treatment for it. Well, I think the most obvious thing is to set a sleep schedule my husband is so good at this. I mean, he's down at the same time every night and up at the same time every day, even on the weekends. I'm not as good at that, but I'm working on it. Maybe you can relate to that. Or maybe you could try meditation. I know I had to practice meditation when I was in that very difficult stage of my dissertation. I'll put it here, but it's not something I do on a regular basis, but I do like to sit in the quiet and just enjoy my surroundings, maybe just for a few minutes. You could also try taking vitamin D supplements. I've mentioned this before. Vitamin D deficiency has been linked to sleep problems in people with fibromyalgia. There's one study that found that taking vitamin D and trazodone, which is an antidepressant, helped with 
sleep and pain because vitamin D can reduce the widespread pain that we feel. And I believe it's helped me. I take vitamin D3 daily. But talk to your doctor if you are concerned about adding supplements. And we need to exercise. You know, the amount of exercise that someone in their 30s or 40s can do compared to someone in their 60s is going to be different. Researchers aren't normally asking for much. Some do, but your doctor isn't. I mean, my doctors don't. Usually I've been told five to 15 minutes. Start slow and build up. I know I've mentioned this before. I mention it because I need to hear it too. I'm stubborn and thick-headed. Sometimes uh, we just need to hear the same thing over and over and over before it finally clicks. Well, maybe, maybe I should be doing that. And that's how it is for me in exercise because I can be really good at it for quite a while. And then, I don't know, life gets in the way and I forget. A lot of time I just try to be active. I mean, housework can take a toll on you. Yesterday I we went to our camper. We have a, a camper at a campground and we needed to get it cleaned up for the summer season and sure is a lot easier to clean that camper than it is to clean my house but i don't keep a mop out there so i have to get on my hands and knees i put a towel under my knees and i just scoot around on the linoleum floor it is linoleum in parts of it and the other part is carpet so I just got to get down there and scrub that floor clean. My husband, thankfully, came in. I was washing all the dishes. So he came in and vacuumed and ran the carpet later. Why would we even want to do that when we feel so bad? Because we're important. And it is going to make us better. It really does help. So I hope you found this video helpful. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. Mm -hmm. Horse. That's Tesla chewing on something. No, no. There's a wicker basket back there that he shouldn't be chewing on. Oops. Mm -hmm.